So F1 is back, and better than ever in 2022, with new cars, new drivers, and a lack of dodgy sponsors on the grid. Hey there guys, I'm Will, and welcome to F1. P1. And today, with the new season commencing this weekend in Bahrain, I thought it would be a good idea to make some money. I mean, help the average fan get an overview of the year ahead. Look, we're all winners, alright? Let's not waste any time then and start with the driver moves ahead of the season, with the most notable of which taking place at reigning constructors champions Mercedes. After five years of being Lewis Hamilton's bellboy, Valtteri Bottas has made the decision to move to Alfa Romeo for 2022. At least that's what he's told himself. In reality, Bottas has been replaced by rising British star George Russell after three successful campaigns for the Williams team. George is seen as the future of the Mercedes outfit, though how it will stack up against hashtag blessed remains to be seen. Going back to Bottas, the Finn replaces retiring Kimi Raikkonen at Alfa Romeo this season and he'll be joined by rookie Guan Yu Zhou in the second car. Zhou has spent the last three seasons in FIA Formula 2, taking five wins in that time and scoring a best championship finish of third last year. Is he ready Formula 1 material? Well, the 30 million in financial backing definitely helps, but he should at least do better than some of the rookies last year. Speaking of everyone's favourite Russian, he was due to continue racing for Haas in 2022. However, with his country's invasion of Ukraine, the team have opted to throw both him and title sponsor Ural Kali into the Gulag, with Kevin Magnussen slotting back into the team. Magnussen drove for Haas from 2017 to 2020, where he became known for smashing doors and offering Nico Hülkenberg to suck his balls. The Danish driver has some impressive raw speed, though, and could definitely be one to keep an eye on in 2022. Another ex-driver returns this season in the form of Alex Albon, the tie replacing Russell at Williams alongside Nicholas Latifi. Albon raced for Red Bull in 2020, before some bad luck and several crumpled Formula 1 cars led to the team dropping him in favour of Sergio Perez. He'll be back with a point to prove, and with Williams on an upwards trend, he may well have the machinery to do just that this year. So now that's covered, let's look at the new calendar for this season, with it being expanded to 23 races for 2022. The year starts in Bahrain and ends in Abu Dhabi like normal. However, Saudi Arabia moves from the penultimate race to round two, and we see the likes of Australia, Canada, Singapore and Japan return after dropping off the schedule due to the pandemic. A new street track in Miami will host round five of the season, and expect somewhere like Portimao or Sepang to return for round 17. After this, and all future Russian Grand Prix were cancelled due to Putin being a bit of a dick lately. That says you'll be hard pressed to find someone who's disappointed with that news. Finally, the universally loved sprint qualifying format is set to return at Imola, Austria, and Brazil for next year, with more points on offer and a bid to make the teams actually try in these races. Now let's look at the new cars, as this year features one of the biggest technical shakeups since the cars were fitted with dildos in 2014. In F1's 10 millionth attempt to improve overtaking, the sport has shifted back to ground effect machine for 2022. This year, you'll see large Venturi tunnels replacing the barge boards seen on last year's cars, turning them effectively into massive wings, and therefore generating huge amounts of downforce. The front and rear wings have been further simplified to produce less dirty air, and shift said flow up and over the following cars behind. Theoretically, this should make it easy to close down and pass a car ahead, and drivers in testing have been relatively positive about the new reg change, but we won't really find out if they've worked until the first Grand Prix on Sunday. Finally, you'll notice the 2022 cars have bigger wheels, with the 13-inch tyres increased to 18 inches for this season. Visibility should be reduced as a result, so perhaps expect a few more driver errors early in the year, especially at street tracks like Jeddah or Monaco. Prior to the car launches, there was a genuine fear that all the cars would look the same for 2022. But boy, were we wrong. Several radical concepts have already come out of F1 testing, including Ferrari's sculpted side pods and Mercedes, well, lack of side pods altogether. With the cars now having run at Barcelona and Bahrain, there are a few things that we can take away. Though remember that testing times rarely compute to the actual running order. With that said, here are a few things that we can tell at this early stage. Ferrari and Red Bull appear to be the front runners heading into the new season, with both teams looking fast and reliable going into round one. Meanwhile, McLaren looked quick in Spain, but struggled significantly with heating and brake issues in Sakir. One of their drivers, Daniel Ricciardo, has also tested positive for Rona in the last week, so they'll definitely be starting this season off on the back foot. Another team that appears to be struggling are Mercedes, who despite dominating through several rule changes over the last eight years, may finally have met their match for the new W13. The team feel confident they can have a winning car at some point this season, though the Silver Arrows challenging for pole at round one doesn't really seem likely at this stage. So before we wrap up, let's just take you through my drivers to watch this year, starting with reigning world champion Max Verstappen. The Dutch driver may have divided the world on Twitter last year, but will be wanted to come back and challenge for title number two in 2022, 
And with Red Bull looking to have a good car, it's certainly not out of the realm as a possibility. Potentially in his way, however, are the Ferrari duo of Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. The pair were one of the strongest last year as they built Ferrari back up from whatever 2020 was, and look set to be fighting at the front this season with the new regulations and a radically different car. I've also put my neck on the line and said Sainz will claim the title, so here's hoping this will be the first year in a while where Ferrari pull out a miracle and don't f*** it up. McLaren's Lando Norris could also be a driver to watch this year, provided McLaren sort out their testing problems ahead of the first round in Bahrain. The Briton stepped up against his new experienced teammate Daniel Ricciardo in 2021, claiming several podiums and almost a race win had he listened to his team in Russia. But with him going stronger year on year, let's just see what he can do this time around. Lastly, let's talk about the Mercedes duo of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. Regardless of whether they are competitive come the start of the season, the teammate dynamic will definitely be one to keep an eye on this year. Hamilton always got on well with Bottas because, let's be blunt, Bottas was a little bit shit. Though that may not be the case with Russell, who as mentioned earlier is seen as the next star of the Brackley-based team. Last time Hamilton had a teammate that could fight him, it didn't end particularly well. So the Mercedes dynamic could be an interesting one to watch this season. But that's your quick rundown of F1 in 2022. If this is your first time here, I spend my weekends writing bad and borderline offensive jokes about the races. So if that sounds up your street, then be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of it. Starting this year, I'll also be streaming live race watch-alongs over on my Twitch channel. So if you fancy joining me on there, the link is down in the description below. Finally, a big thank you to the patrons for their support on the channel, but I'll see you soon with another video. And until then, have a good one.